Thank you. God bless you. Uh, the wise man Solomon said, of the making of books, there is no end. If they let him look in on things down here today, he would, he'd possibly at least add one word in there, of the making of very many books, there's no end. Uh, you can read and you can study all kinds of uh, information. But <coughs> there are two classes of truth. Uh, one is what we call historical truth. Uh, it, it is truth, but it's irrelevant to your salvation. And then there is pertinent truth. Pertinent truth means you got to get it. It means if you don't have it, you're a loser. Pertinent truth has to do with the doctrines of the Word of God, the truths of the Word of God, and they are truths that you can't ignore. Uh, they, 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 they are truths that you can't just say, well, maybe someday I'll get acquainted with that. Uh, they are truths that like eating. You eat now. You don't eat day after tomorrow. Uh, you're hungry now. And so God wants us to move into pertinent truth very strongly. It's more important than reading your daily newspaper or any kind of a magazine. Some of us use most of our reading time with, with the religious magazines. Most of them don't have anything in there that has to do with a pertinent livelihood that you have with God and for eternity. Uh, this, their own little stories that they give, own little sermons about a text or something or another. But what you need to do is to find the pertinent truths from God and start pursuing them. One of those is what we have today on page 70 of your teaching syllabus, that the gifts of healing. Now, we will not deny that there are some things in God that are complex. And of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, this one is the most complex. Uh, because uh, if you start making uh, uh, demands upon God, you just pass him by. You just keep missing God. If you start <coughs> telling God what he has to do uh, and you miss God, then you can get discouraged, you know, until you get solid upon this fact that God is sovereign, that God is almighty, and that whatever God does is ultimately good. Can you say amen? And, and that God, being a, a good God, loves you and loves your future. One lady lost her husband through death, and she was so angry at God. Until one day she was praying, said, why did you take my husband? Well, so that seeing that you want to know so bad, I'll tell you, this was the only time in his whole life I could get him to heaven, otherwise he'd have been in hell. Are you pleased with my wisdom? She said, yes. She said, well, keep your mouth shut. Anytime you start trying to boss God and tell God what to do, you're trying to act as if you are, are omniscient, you know, and that you know all things and that you're more qualified than God is to do what God is doing. So I would recommend, and that's the way with my life, I leave things in the hands of God. If I don't understand them, I say, I'll catch up, Lord, no doubt, I'll catch up. Uh, it, I, I lay all the blame upon myself if I'm not fully comprehending uh, that when I reach a certain place in God, I will fully comprehend. And if it has to be in eternity, I'll take it that way too. I'm going to trust him straight through the valley of the shadow of death is what I mean. I'm not going to stop short somewhere and say, now, wait a minute, this thing went good until now, <laughs> and it's not going good anymore. I, I'm, not, I'm not going to do that. If it has to do with my life or the life of my loved ones or whatever, I'm going to say, now, God, you're a good God, and I know that, and I'm sure of that, and I believe I believe that whatever you're doing, one day I'm going to see that it's the best thing that could ever have been done because I trust you. Say trust. That's where you break down, you know. You trust yourself, but you don't trust him. Now, in this, in this gift we have here, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, at verse 28, it says that he will give to us teachers, and after that he will give us miracles, and he will give us gifts of healing. Now, that is in the plural, gifts of healing. Now, that means that there are more than one gift of healing. And, and so we, we will seek to look into it and ask the Lord 
uh, to, to help us with it. This is possibly one of the most exciting, one of the most exciting gifts that, that we have uh, among the nine gifts of the Spirit. When you see a person delivered from demon possession instantly and their face lights up, you say, man, isn't that wonderful? Their eyes glitter and their tongue begins to praise God and you're looking straight at it. You're glad that something flowed out of you and flowed into them that made their life brand new. You know, you were so glad that this thing worked that way. You were, you were so thankful that it worked that way, you see. And, and so uh, it is an exciting gift. Uh, when, when Peter, we'll be talking about it in our lesson here possibly, uh, when, when Peter had his mother-in-law sick. Now that's the most embarrassing sickness you can have is your mother-in-law. She never did precisely like you anyway. She never thought you were good enough for her daughter. And, and now she's proving it. You claim to be a preacher and you can't get her healed. She said, well, I just thought you were like this, you know. And you, didn't you have to run out for help to the big preacher and say, Jesus, you better come in. My mother-in-law is sick and she's calling me a lot of bad names in there that I'm not really called of God and I don't mean anything and I'm no good and she's got the proof of it. I can't heal her fever. Would you just kind of come and help me? You know, and then when Jesus goes in and in an instant's time uh, heals her, it brings a lot of good feeling on the inside. Are you here? All right. Uh, the gifts of healing have to do with the supernatural. Now, if you don't tack that down, you'll be trying to work in the natural and this thing does not work in the natural. We're not talking about natural healing. We thank God for every doctor there is on the face of this earth. But doctors will also tell you that even though they were to, to, to sew up an, uh, uh, a hole there in your body, that that doesn't heal. That something else has to heal. And those that know God will say they go back to God for the healing part. They sew it up and God heals it up. And, and so uh, there's only one source of healing, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And, and so uh, uh, we, we appreciate all the help, you know, that, that we need and we thank God for them. But we are talking about a supernatural imparting of the Almighty God and His healing forces into a human person, into an in intelligent human person. Now, let's, 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 let's look at it uh, in your point number two. How, how many, how many gifts of healing would there be? I am sure this has been debated for 2,000 years. How many gifts of healing? Uh, we don't know. But I have often wondered that it might be in relation uh, to the cost of your healing. There were 39 stripes on Jesus' back. It could be that there are 39 categories of illness that you could name in insanity out there, possession out there, ailments of the organs of the body, fevers and so forth. There could be 39 areas. And if one had the total gifts of healing, he could heal any person who ever stood before him. A number of years ago, 35 or 40 years ago, Brother Oral Roberts was demonstrating, along with about a hundred other uh, evangelists that God had raised up during what we call the healing revival. And Brother Roberts would tell me many times, he'd say, Lester, just tell me why all the people don't get healed, and the one that I <coughs> think is getting healed doesn't get healed, and the one I don't think is getting healed is getting healed. Well, I, I said, now, number one, you can't heal everybody because you don't have the right name. Your name's Oral, but if you had the name Jesus, it would work. Amen. The only person who healed everybody was Jesus. Paul couldn't do it. Peter couldn't do it. No other human has ever done it. But Jesus, being, being the glorious Savior of the world, and the, and the cost of your healing was placed upon his back, then he can heal anybody, everybody, but you are limited. Now you say, well, now why does God limit us? Now, honey, get smart. 
Are you here? Let any little preacher come to town and I won't be naming anybody and let him get a few healings and you go nuts with a capital N. You get over there and give him all your money that belongs to the church and, 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 and you get over there and you sit there with your mouth open, you could swallow six flies and wouldn't know where they came in at. He has so much money, he doesn't know what to do with it, and the church can't pay the light bill because of you. If one man had the gifts of the Spirit, he would become God. You would place all your treasure at his feet, and you would sit there and worship him. God does not want that. These gifts are not for persons, they're for the body of Christ. And they function through us as part of the body and not a satellite up in the heavens. God told me that he was weary of this satellite business, of these people getting on television and radio and screaming out how great they are and how wonderful they are and receiving all kinds of funds that they can build great buildings with and do a lot of great things with, but it's all for themselves. Jesus told me one time, says, did you know they don't even put my name on the building? And I supplied the funds and they don't even put my name on the building. They put their own name on the building, you see. When you have a great display of God's power, the first thing that comes welling up within you is how great I am. Look who I am. No, you can't telephone me anymore. I'm too great for a telephone call. Did you know that two-thirds of the preachers in this country, you cannot telephone them? Some little squirts that don't have a hundred people in a congregation, you have to go through two secretaries to find them. And then they answer back through the secretary, they don't have time to talk to you. And they wonder why the anointing of God is not upon them and upon their services. Anytime that you take importance for yourself and make yourself important, you're not any longer a servant. Are you here? A servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so this particular gift he has to be so, so careful with for this simple reason it operates in the physical, you know, where you can see it and, 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 and everybody, anybody can see it. And then if you're not careful, if it continues to function through one person, then you've got an area of pride there. I'm greater than he, I'm more holy than he, just look what I have and what God has done for me. And what God wants is for this to function through the whole body of Christ so that the world will be saved. God wants the world to see the body. Jesus wants the world to see his body. He don't want them just to see his nose snorting. Are you here? I hope we can warn you sufficiently that there'll be someone through town and then he'll be doing things that you think are miracles. And the first thing I'd like for you to do is to find out where his wife is. Amen. Don't put your head too back. You might, get, you might break your neck. <laughs> we want people that also live right. Yeah. We're sick and tired of men that live wrong around telling people how to live right when they don't live right themselves. Yeah. That's a great reason. <clears throat> That's a great reason for functioning inside the body because inside the body we checkmate, you see. But outside the body, nobody checks. You're a little God on your own out there and there's nobody seeing what kind of life you're living. And then if he comes to hold a great crusade, let's call back down where he came from, see if you paid his bills before he left town. Oh, you see, <laughs> do they do that? Well, ask the police. Are you here? Everything that sparkles is not a diamond. You can buy some of them at Woolworths for 25 cents. They sparkle, but they don't have a lot of value behind them. We want that which is precious and that which is right and that which is good. I'm just trying to tell you that this is a sensational gift here. God does want it to work in, inside his body. The Lord Jesus Christ does want it to work with us, but he wants us to be humble with it also. Now, did we get it across that time? He wants us to be humble with it. In our, in our, own, in, in, in our own city here, we, we've had laymen to pray for two people that had cancer and both of them got healed, but they quit the church. They went off and started another little church. The little church that the Bible school owns over there was started that way, over there on Prairie Avenue. 
and, and uh, just because God healed a couple of people, they couldn't sit under me any longer as a pastor. I'm telling you, reality. And what we want you to do is, is not, not to run off somewhere and start your own little mess. We want you to stay inside the body of Christ and let's build the body of the Lord Jesus Christ on this earth. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> we do want the power. We do want the anointing, but we do want the unity of the body. God wants the unity of the body. And let us not think of ourselves more highly than we ought to think, because let us know that we're saved by grace. We are what we are by the mercies of God, that we are nothing within ourselves but a piece of clay that will go back to clay, and that He is King of kings and Lord of lords. Yes. Hallelujah. God bless you. Now, we, we I've often thought, you know, <clears throat> Back, back in the uh, 40s, the, the, the late 40s and the early 50s, we must have had at least a, a hundred men that had very remarkable results in their prayer lines. We had a number of them in our church here. We had Brother Oral Roberts twice in our city. <clears throat> we had Rex Humbert twice in our city with his family. Uh, we had Clifton Erickson three or four times in our city, and then there were others who didn't come to us specifically, but just came, just, just came to the city. And, and I would observe these men, and, and that would be good if you would like to do something like that. I, I would uh, observe uh, these men, and I would see that they had certain kinds of healing take place. Now, I, I could challenge you that if you would go back into the archives, uh, <clears> Old <throat> Roberts University has such an archive of, of the full gospel past, and you were to pick up these various men, they all had magazines in those days, and if you were to pick up those magazines and say, take 12 magazines for one year uh, from this evangelist, and then 12 from that, and then 12 from the other. Now, all you would have to do is to go through the magazine and say, now, let's see, this event is, let's read the healing page, you know? And you know what you'd find? In 12 months' time, almost every healing was either be by one or two different healings, and, and that, that, was, that, that was what he was limited to. And then you'd read the next one, and it would be maybe quite different from that, but you'd find that one or two or three different healings, and that's all, all the different kind of healings he had. Well, you say, now, just a minute, Smith Wigglesworth, he only had about one. He had a, a, a gift that was very remarkable in, in the area of insanity, or in, 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 the, in the area of seizures. He would jump off of a platform run to the back of a big auditorium if someone was having a seizure, they were healed just, just like that. But if you'd have had a headache, well, the first thing they'd done is hit you and you'd have two headaches then. His and the other one. But in that certain area there, I don't know that he failed because he was in tune with God and in tune with a gift, you see, and, 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 and he got it. Now, the man that you don't know anything about is Stephen Jeffries. Stephen Jeffries uh, possibly had the, the, the greatest healing ministry in the last hundred years. But you being you into the operation uh, of the church, then you don't know anything about it. I knew him personally, and I followed him around the world. His, his, his greatest uh, healings were in the area of arthritis and especially rheumatoid arthritis. And the worse you were, the better he liked it. If you were screwed up like a corkscrew with your head between your legs and your feet pulled up over your ears and you couldn't straighten up your back, that's the kind he liked. He wouldn't wait for a healing line. If you got wheeled into his meeting, he'd go down those steps and run down that middle aisle and they'd tell me that for 30 feet around him, they'd hear bones popping back into place. And about five minutes later, the evangelist would be riding in the wheelchair, and the guy that came in in the wheelchair was pushing him down the middle aisle. Now, I just want to tell you, just after that, you asked for an offering, and nobody could count it for two or three days. Are you here? Yeah. And, and uh, I hate to tell you this, but in South Africa, before thousands of people 
He said, the whole world is at my feet. That was true. He had prayed for the royal family in, in England. They were at his feet. He had wealth. He had wealth that he never needed anything else as long as he lived. But six months later, he had rheumatoid arthritis. I went to his home to pray for him personally. I had to lie down on the floor to see his face. Lie down on the floor to look up and see his face because his face was between his legs. And he died of rheumatoid arthritis. God does not permit you to have his goal nor his glory. The things happening in our world right now where God is taking the gold and the glory from some. Yeah. And he's not finished with the job. Someone said, you know, Brother Summer, you, doesn't, you, you must not mean much. You, you, you don't brag about what you have and what you're doing. Well, you know the reason? I want to live a long time. Yeah. yeah. So I don't have to have anybody brag about me. I don't have to have anybody say, you're great. I just smile at them and say, I'm going to be 80 my, birth my next birthday. And all those boasting fellows, they're all dead now. Are you here? Yeah. We're trying to give you truth that belongs in the body, the body of Jesus Christ. It does not belong in individuals as individuals, but individuals as they are a part of the body of Christ. Well, hallelujah. You people on television there, if you ever came to understand this, you would know something. Something that universities cannot teach you. Something that seminaries don't know anything about and they cannot teach you. But when you come to know these things, there is, I wouldn't want to call it hidden power, but there is mighty power if God sees that we are qualified to stay humble before him and to use it for the kingdom and not for the glorifying of ourselves. And all the people said, uh, and on the next page there, uh, why the gifts are limited. Uh, I, I, I told you a little about that. You can, you can read the rest, the rest of it here. I did tell that, 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 Luth, that Lucifer in heaven as an archangel uh, really was covered with stones that were worth a lot of money and covered with garments worth a lot of money. And he looked at himself and lost his estate. And, and that's what we're talking about. When God gives you too much, sometimes our natural person is not able to understand it and to stay humble, to stay humble before it. Now, uh, <clears throat> and how the gift works, we talked to you already about uh, Reverend Stephen Jeffries, a very beautiful man. Uh, he is the only one in history where people stood in line for as much as three days in order to get into the building. And he had the guts to pray for people 24 hours a day. He'd take the largest auditorium available, he'd fill it up and pray for the sick, he'd empty it out, go over and eat a little at the hotel and sleep a little, come back and do it again, paid no attention to a clock at all. The police outside helped them to get in and helped them to get out. And they put the people out one direction and brought them in another direction so that you couldn't get two sessions, get into two sessions yourself. And so uh, I don't know of anyone that ever had people going through his building on a, take you three days to get in and the police had to take care of you down the street for two or three blocks waiting for your time uh, to, to, to get into the building. But yet, I understand they had to break his bones to get him into a casket. You just can't mess with God. Uh, Fred Squire is a very close friend of mine. He was an Englishman. The last time I saw him, he had had 400 blind eyes open, but hardly anything else at all. He had a gift for blindness that was simply a phenomenon. And I lived with him in England and knew him, uh, knew him uh, quite well. Uh, Clifton Erickson. Uh, had, had, had tremendous power in the area of goiters. I have personally seen, and, and, and he, would, he would call up 25 doctors out of 50 or 60,000 people and, and, and have everybody with a goiter to come and stand and demand the doctors to come and feel of those awful things. He'd say one prayer. He didn't touch anybody. He stayed on the platform. He said one prayer. And he'd grin a little bit and say to the doctors, did you touch these people? Try it again. And they'd come back through there scared. That hard knot that was like, an, like, like, a, like a piece of iron in there was like a little baby's skin. It had all gone. 
And they'd turn around to the people and says, now, I don't know what this is all about. I'm a visitor here. I'm just a doctor. But says, I want to tell you something. I touched them while ago, and it was hard, and now there's only a little bit of flabby skin uh, left there where, where it used to be. Uh, he had a gift like that. And uh, I don't like to say these things. It'll surely get back to them. But he has a very humble job today, uh, not, not in the ministry. Uh, and uh, we, we know the whole story. I can only say to you, and I can only say to myself, for God's sake, live right. Because God will not tolerate but a certain amount of wickedness, and then he comes against it. God wants his church pure. The pure in heart shall see God. And I want to be a good man. I don't want necessarily to be a successful man, but I want to be a good man. Say good. good. And I want you to be good. I don't want you to be doing things I, where you say, well, I, I sure hope Brother Summerall don't see me. Well, there's someone bigger than that, and his name is Jesus, and he's looking all the time, got eyes back and front. Are you here? Yeah. Okay. Give the Lord a hand, everybody.